Ontario is currently under invasion. This invasion force is so large, it's unfathomable. It covers almost the entire province. Okay, so the invasion I'm talking about is not a human invasion. It's actually invasive species, and more specifically, invasive earthworms. Now hold up, you're telling me that earthworms are invasive? Well yes, earthworms are invasive. The invasion of Ontario alone began about 300 years ago when Europeans arrived on the continent. Before that, earthworms hadn't been in this region for over 10,000 years. The last ice age decimated native populations, so the forests around us developed without the presence of earthworms. Earthworms continue to spread throughout Ontario by the assistance of humans. You see, they naturally spread at a very, very slow rate. But through the process of being sold as fishing bait, getting stuck on the underbodies of cars, hiking boots, you name it, these little guys right here are able to spread rapidly throughout the province and now have spread through about 50% of the area. However, you'll find pockets where they still haven't existed yet. So you'll find forests with earthworms and forests without. Now we're still not 100% sure what restricts their movement and there's more studies that are trying to assist in that knowledge. So we really don't have too many ideas as to how earthworms are actually affecting the province. You can see from this map that they are widespread. These are my two field sites, one in Ganaraska and two up in the Corthus. The one in Ganaraska is invaded, but then I have the two in the Corthus. Now, what makes these interesting is that one is invaded and one is not invaded, and they're only 500 meters across from each other, so that makes a perfect small comparison between the two of them. In my master's research, I'm really trying to look at what these earthworms do to carbon cycling in our forests. Now we know in agriculture that the presence of earthworms can be a really great thing for soil fertility and crop growth. But in the forest we see some dramatic effects. Now I'm specifically looking at carbon and CO2 efflux, which is carbon dioxide being released from the soil. As earthworms move through that soil and chew up leaves, they bring all that carbon rich nutrients down and stratify soil layers into almost one giant mucky mass. So how am I going to study CO2 efflux when we can't see carbon dioxide? We're going to use an infrared gas analyzer, which we've connected up to a cylinder that we've installed into the ground. Now, this cylinder acts as a chamber, and the CO2 builds up inside this chamber. That CO2 transfers over to the infrared gas analyzer and is read out real-time on our computer so we can see the real-time changes and buildup of CO2. We're going to average that over 15 soil collars per site and see how real-time that CO2 efflux rate is changing at our site. I'm also going to be looking at how earthworms affect fine root biomass. I'm going to be looking at the soil carbon content. I'm going to look at a very fine per centimeter, per centimeter, per centimeter basis to really see how they're altering that soil horizon. I'm also going to be looking at vegetation surveys and I'm going to be taking a lots of climatic data. 